You know, Rita, I've always been fascinated with actors' early credits. Now, if we saw an old episode of The Brady Bunch, would you pop up in there somewhere? <laughs> Why, whatever do you mean? <laughs> I got my SAG card doing the Brady Bunch, so it's like if it weren't for the Brady Bunch, I wouldn't be sitting here today in my, you know, smoking suit or whatever <laughs> this is. Um, and it was, yeah, I was, I was in there. I was the episode. I uh, played a character called Pat Conway, who was uh, running against cheerleader, run, running for cheerleader against Marsha and Greg's girlfriend. And Greg was the judge, and he had to choose between Marsha and his girlfriend. But then he did a really good thing and chose me instead. And then he didn't offend anybody. Was that a, a particularly big thrill for you at the time oh to do God. that? Oh, my God. Are you kidding? This was like being, I don't know what this was like being. It was like, uh, I mean, I, 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 to get to work with the Brady Bunch and get to walk on that set that was so fake <laughs> and see all that stuff and be completely shocked by it. But then I had to teach Maureen McCormick the cheer that we did in the show and um, to be around Greg, who was like so dreamy, so cute, <laughs> that was amazing. But then to find out things like Marsha was 15 years old, 15 and a half, and she had a Mercedes Benz that she drove herself every day to work. Not with her mom, just drove herself, 15 and a half. I don't know how she pulled that off, but she did. A Mercedes, chocolate brown, which was the cool color back then. And, um, uh, you know, it was like... Amazing. Right. You know, everybody in the world saw that. What would that. It would be like being on, what's the number one show now? Seinfeld or something? Friends? Yeah, yeah being on that. All right. Now, I also got a question about your early, early modeling days. Now, every person who's been a model has that one modeling assignment from hell, whether they're in a wedding dress in the jungle oh, or whatever. Yeah. What was the, the assignment from hell for you? Well, um, I can't think of one specific one, but, you know, you are, you're always shooting um, bikinis in January and February in the middle of the water. You're freezing cold, and, you know, you're supposed to be doing that. And then there's also you know, shooting winter clothes in the middle of summer, much like this movie. <laughs> so, um, you know, that's always, you know, very uncomfortable, and you're having to look very natural doing it. Well, well turning to this film, I got a question about habits you pick up from your co-star. Now, uh, are you either lifting weights right now? Are you uh, I don't smoking know what you're talking about. <laughs> I just, you know, lately people have been telling me I'm doing something different with my voice or something, but I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, where's my stogie? Where's my hammer? I got to see it. Did you bring it? <laughs> now, you know, when I was a kid, you know, the big toy to have for me was a G.I. Joe, which I think now are worth about 150 bucks a piece. The original The original, Joe's the big ones, ones yeah. Wow. Uh, when you were uh, a young girl, what was the, the big toy for you? Barbies were always popular, and um, Chatty Cathy dolls were really popular. Those were, you know, Chatty Cathy's would pull a string and they'd talk, and, you know, I don't even remember what they would say. My name's Cathy, or something like that. <laughs> and, um... That and then you know, girls always liked things like kittens and you know <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> but uh, there was a, there wasn't any like one particular thing that you had to have. I don't recall growing up that yeah. there was one thing. No, well, like a question about your kids when they want uh, uh, toys because you you grew up in, in not a, not a wealthy family. No. So um, you know these days, uh, you know how much thought do you put into what your children want when they ask uh, what, what they can have and what they can have. I get them everything they want. We don't buy uh, weapons, <laughs> you know, <laughs> toy weapons or real weapons. We don't do that. But um, uh, we get them what they want. We just don't get them too much of what they want. Mm -hmm. So, you know, selectively making sure that they're satisfied without going over the top. And can I ask one Tom and Rita question? Sure. Okay. We have some footage of you uh, arriving at the Oscars a couple of years ago when you were in the black outfit with the white top. Right. Uh, you, you, look, you look so happy. You're all waving at the crowd and having a great time. Um, I'm just wondering, when you're out as a couple and people approach you all the time about ideas or story ideas, how on guard are you when you go out about people who, who, who want things because you're in a, an elevated position in Hollywood? Well, it's a lot easier actually than it sounds because first of all it's very recognizable if you're around someone who's just gonna try to pitch you something it's very clear and and people are pretty much for the most part very respectful and they go through the proper channels but um, you just have to tell them you know I'm sorry I can't 
accept this because legally we cannot. It has to go through our agents. Otherwise, you know, cut to, you know, you're in some movie five years from now and they say, I sent that script to Rita Wilson five years ago and that's my story. And then you're in the middle of some lawsuit. You had never read this script that came to you, you know, because someone handed it to you somewhere. So yeah. it's, it's not that much of a problem, really. Most people are very professional.